21 Things You Must Know Before Traveling to New York City. Hi, I'm Megan, a licensed New York City tour guide, and I have been helping people get their very best New York City experience for over a decade. And today we're going to talk about everything from what time of year is best to visit New York City, where should you stay, what food should you eat, how much money should you bring, what are scams to watch out for, and so much more. But before we get started, make sure that you click subscribe so you never miss a New York Minute. How long should your first trip to New York City be? Well, of course, there's going to be a bunch of factors that play into this, including where you're traveling from, what your budget is, and how much time you can realistically take off. Now, in my opinion, if I was recommending a length of time for a first stay in New York City, I would recommend five days and four nights. The reason for this is I feel like that amount of time gives you time to see all of the main attractions. You can see at the top of an observation deck, see a Broadway show, see the Statue of Liberty, and you can also take time to go to more off the beaten path sites, and you'll really get a feel for the energy of the city. Now, of course, if you only have 24 hours, you're still going to have a great time in New York City. And if you come for a year abroad, you are never going to run out of things to do. But I would recommend that as a minimum for your first day, should you have the time and the budget, four nights and five days would be great. When is the best time to visit New York City? So New York City, it doesn't actually have an off season. This is something that actually surprised me when I traveled abroad, that I would go in like October and everything would be closed. I couldn't get into restaurants or attractions. That's not going to be the case in New York City. Pretty much everything in New York City is open 365 days a year. So what you're really going to figure out for yourself is what side of New York City's personality do you want to experience? So you have the summertime in New York City. That's going to be warm, possibly even very hot and humid. You're going to have a lot of fun, free outdoor activities, outdoor movies, outside Shakespeare, outside classical music concerts, outdoor rock concerts. You can go roller skating, you can play pickleball, you can just sit out in Central Park and soak up some sun and walk around and just not be frigid cold. So I personally gravitate towards the summer. However, I know some people really don't like the heat. So if you don't like the heat, what a lot of people recommend is that you come in September or October. So this is sort of a shoulder season for New York City. You're not going to have a ton of crowds, which is a huge bonus. And you're also not going to have the crazy heat. It will still be warm, but you have those first breezes of autumn that sort of come and cool everything off. Then you get into the holiday season, and the holiday season is so popular and so magical, it's so whimsical, I have a very, very hard time imagining that any place in the world does Christmas better than New York City. You have the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree, you have all the lights of Fifth Avenue, we have so many outdoor ice skating rinks and holiday markets. It's really, really fabulous. And of course, that season always kicks off with the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade on Thanksgiving. So really from Thanksgiving through New Year's, we also have that New Year's ball drop, you're going to have a really, really special New York City experience. Just know that that is going to have crazy crowds during the holiday season. And then we have January and February, which I feel like a lot of people would say isn't a good time to visit New York City because it can be just so cold. But that's a really great time if you're traveling on a 
budget because we really don't have crowds. So that's when you're going to get the best deals on hotels, for example. And then we have these weeks. So we have Broadway week, we have must-see week, we have a restaurant week. And this is where you can see Broadway shows, go to New York City attractions, and go to New York City restaurants and enjoy them at a hugely discounted price. So if you're a budget traveler, January and February are fabulous. Now, the one time of year that really, it, it's not my favorite time of year is spring. I personally don't like spring because I just find the weather to be crazy. It can be really hot one day and then really cold the next. If it, if it does snow, the snow can melt and turn to slush and then refreeze and then re-snow and it's just a mess. We also have a lot of crowds because this is when we have a lot of very large groups, especially large student groups coming for their spring break. So it is a very popular time to come, but in my opinion, if you can go kind of the summer through February, uh, you, that's when you're going to have the best experience. And then spring, you have just kind of crazy weather and crazy crowds. However, everything's going to be open. You'll be able to enjoy New York City. And in springtime, we also have the cherry blossoms. And the cherry blossoms are really, really magical as well. So something no matter what time you visit, it just depends on what you personally want to experience. If you're watching this and you've been to New York City, I'm just curious what your favorite season is and why. So if you could just write that in the comments, that would be amazing because it would help everybody out who's watching this video to know what other people have experienced in New York City. If you're visiting New York City for the very first time, it's important that you understand the layout of New York City. So New York City is really comprised of five counties. We New Yorkers like to be different. We call them boroughs. Our five boroughs are Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Staten Island. And my guess is if you are visiting New York City for the very first time, you are going to spend most, if not all of your time in the borough of Manhattan, which is technically the smallest of our boroughs, but also the most populated. It's where you're gonna find everything from Central Park to the shops of Fifth Avenue, Times Square, the Garment District, the twisty, turny, windy streets of the village, the Financial District, Wall Street, and Battery Park. So lots of awesome stuff in Manhattan. All of the boroughs have something wonderful to offer, a reason to go. A lot of first time visitors will visit the Bronx because they visit the Bronx Zoo. You'll visit Queens if you want to go to Flushing Meadow Corona Park, or if you use one of our airports, JFK Airport or LaGuardia, both in Queens. Brooklyn, a lot of people will walk over the Brooklyn Bridge and enjoy Dumbo or Williamsburg if you walk over the Williamsburg Bridge. And then Staten Island is of course famous for the Staten Island Ferry, absolutely free, gets you really close to the Statue of Liberty on its way to Staten Island. And then right off of the Staten Island Ferry, there are a bunch of outlet stores that you can go shopping in. So there's a reason to go to all five boroughs, but my guess is you will spend most of your time in Manhattan. So now that you know the layout, where should you stay? Now, I am not going to be diplomatic about this at all. I have very strong feelings about where you should stay if it is your first trip to New York City. And that is that you should stay in the borough of Manhattan and you should stay south of 72nd Street, if not south of 59th Street. And the reason for this is almost everything that you are going to do is going to be in that area. It's going to be in Manhattan, south of 72nd Street. And if you are staying near that area, it'll be really easy for you to get to and from any attractions that you want to see. If in the middle of the day, you realize that you wore the wrong shoes, which trust me happens all the time. You will be able to get back to your hotel easily, change your shoes. If you go shopping, you could easily drop something off at your hotel. It just makes life so much easier. 
Also, I strongly encourage everybody to use the subway system, but late at night or on the weekends, the subway system can have changes and it can be confusing even for a local like me who uses it every single day. If you are staying in Manhattan, south of 72nd Street, those changes most likely won't affect you. So you'll be able to easily use that public transit. And if you do decide to not use the public transit and to use a car service or a taxi at any point in time, it's gonna be much easier for you to get that taxi, to get back to your hotel if you need. It's going to be a lot less expensive as well. And you might even be able to walk any place that you want to go during your trip. So I strongly encourage you to stay in Manhattan. I know that I've heard the advice that you should stay in the outer boroughs or even in New Jersey if you wanna have a true local experience or if you wanna save money. And I'm going to tell you right now that it's actually a little hard to save money uh, by staying in one of the boroughs that's not Manhattan or New Jersey because you're going to spend money on transportation in and out of Manhattan. So depending on how many people that is, um, you might just break even at best if you're staying in the outer boroughs. And if you decide that you wanna use a cab, that's just going to be expensive as well. I also believe that while you're traveling, time is money, so you're gonna save so much time by staying in Manhattan. In terms of what to look for in a hotel, New York City really has so many amazing hotels at every price point. So it's really up to you how important it is that the rooms be huge and luxurious or there's someone to shine your shoes as soon as you walk through the door or how wonderful the room service is. In my opinion, the most important thing is location. And then after you find a location, then you're going to be able to choose the hotel at the price point that you want with the amenities that you want. The second most important thing I would say is the concierge team because the concierge team can really make or break your experience. A great concierge, they will be able to get you tickets to Broadway shows that are difficult to get. They'll be able to get you reservations at those restaurants that are impossible to get into. And especially if you're traveling during the busy months, those concierges, they are going to make your experience fabulous. What should you pack for your trip to New York City? Well, so much of this is going to depend on the season that you travel to New York City. I have a whole video about what to pack for the cold winter months. I was born in Florida. I had to learn how to weather New York City's winters. So feel free to watch that. But the one thing that's going to be constant throughout all of the seasons is you need to pack your comfiest shoes. Seriously, your comfiest shoes. Bring your sneakers. You can pack a ball gown if you want. Bring those cocktail dresses, but you are going to want to bring a pair of comfy, comfy, comfy sneakers. What a lot of New Yorkers will do if they need to wear heels, they will put their heels in their bag, they will wear their comfy sneakers to get to the event, and they will change when they are there. Trust me, you need to bring those comfy shoes because you are going to be doing a lot of walking and a lot of standing, and you're gonna be walking sometimes on uneven ground. So you are going to want those comfy shoes. You will thank me. Bring the comfy shoes. The other thing that a lot of people are surprised at is that you will most likely be spending a whole day outside. So you're going to want to bring a bag that's big enough to have everything that you need for the day. So a lot of times people, even in the summer, will have a sweater to put over themselves if they go inside and it's very air conditioned, or maybe a light jacket if you're going outside and it's fall and the temperatures drop, or a hat and gloves if you're here in the winter time. So you're gonna want a bag that's big enough to carry all of that, big enough to carry a water bottle. You are definitely going to wanna to bring a battery pack or some sort of charger for your phone because it can be hard to find a place to charge your phone and you are going to want a 
fully charged phone. So bring a bag that's big enough to carry everything that you need for the day, even transitioning in tonight, a water bottle and a battery pack and your comfiest shoes. You really want to bring those comfy shoes. Which airport should you fly into? So New York City has three main airports that service New York City. We have Newark, which is technically in New Jersey. We also have JFK and LaGuardia, which are both in New York City's borough of Queens. Now, which one you fly into, a lot of that will depend on where you are traveling from. So LaGuardia, that's really for flights that are just traveling short distances. If you are coming from overseas or from California, you're really going to have two options. That's going to be JFK and Newark Airport. Now, in terms of which one is better, Honestly, I would just say whichever one you get the better flight deal or whichever one you get the most airline points using and flying into because really they're all going to be equidistant from Manhattan, assuming you're staying in Manhattan. Now, if you're staying in Queens, I would recommend flying into either JFK or LaGuardia. But other than that, whichever one you get the best flight deal on. How to get from the airport to your hotel. I'm gonna to be totally honest with you and tell you that I am a person that just always takes a taxi or a car service to get home. And there's two reasons for this. The first one is I am often just tired after a long day of traveling. I don't wanna add any more time to that. I am also somebody who often travels with luggage. I am very bad at traveling light. So I just find it easier to put all of my bags into a taxi and then get to where I am staying. However, I know that there are going to be many people who disagree with me about this. There are going to be people who tell me that public transportation is faster. I'm going to argue that this depends on where you are staying. I live up in Harlem. I find that a lot of the really fast public transportation from the airports gets you to Midtown, and then from Midtown you have to get to wherever you are staying if you are not staying in Midtown. Now they also argue that public transportation is less expensive and this is almost always true. But do remember, depending on how many people you are traveling with, the public transportation can be over $10 per person. So if you are traveling with a group of people, it might actually end up costing about the same or being more expensive. Now there are so many public transportation options, it would take me five hours to go over all of them. So what I am going to do is I'm going to link an article in the comments below for you to look at and you can click on that article and you can find the best public transportation option for you. There's also a helicopter option. People love to tell me about this helicopter option. I will never be able to take the helicopter option because they require you have like very small amounts of luggage, but I will link the helicopter option for you as well if you are somebody who really wants to helicopter from JFK airport to the hotel. What's the weather like in New York City? Well, the weather, again, is going to change depending on the season. But one thing that is always the same is that New York City weather is really unpredictable. You think you know what's going to happen in New York City weather, it's gonna throw you for a loop. Now in January and February, it does tend to be very cold. Your best chance of seeing snow is going to be in February, it can also be very windy. Now March, April, and May, I find the weather to be the most unpredictable. It can be really cold. It can be below freezing one day, and then it can be 80 degrees the next. We can have a blizzard, and then we can have an 80 degree day. So the weather can be really, really wacky in the spring. So you're really gonna wanna bring layers and be prepared for anything. June, July, August, September, it tends to be much warmer, especially in July and August. I believe that the high is normally around 85 degrees. It can sometimes jump up to over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and the low is usually around 69 degrees Fahrenheit, but of course we can also get colder as well. Then when we get into the holiday season, the weather, 
I would say is usually close to 50 degrees, but but we can get below freezing. We've had blizzards on Halloween, and then we've also had very warm Thanksgivings. So you really don't know. You're gonna wanna check the weather right before you come and be prepared for anything. And I read that about one third of the days in New York City are rainy. So do be prepared that there will probably be rain during your trip. You can always buy umbrellas and rain jackets once you're here. So weather, unpredictable, come prepared. What do you need to book far in advance in New York City? We do have a few attractions that you really need to book far in advance. Now, the most famous of these is the crown to the Statue of Liberty. Now, the Statue of Liberty's crown, these tickets sell out four months in advance. So you really wanna keep checking that website and as soon as you see that crown tickets are available, you wanna pounce. Now the crown tickets, they are available on the Statue City Cruises website. I will put that in the comments below as well. If that's very important to you to go up to the crown of the Statue of Liberty, that's something that you definitely need to plan in advance. Other things that you need to plan in advance, the most popular Broadway shows, they can often sell out several months in advance. Now that's gonna change from year to year, but if there is a show that you really have your heart set on, buy tickets to that show in advance. Michelin star restaurants, the three Michelin star restaurants, you're gonna wanna book reservations to those several months in advance as well. Uh, if you're staying in a hotel, you can have your hotel concierge help you with reservations to those restaurants. I've only ever been lucky enough to eat at one. It was totally worth it. And we did have a concierge help us make that reservation. So that's when the concierges are really going to make a difference. Other things you're going to want to book in advance, sometimes the sunset time at observation decks, that sells out several weeks or days in advance, depending on the time of year. Also during the holidays, a lot of our holiday activities, they will sell out and certain ice skating slot times, especially at Rockefeller Center. So those are things, it's not as crazy as Statue of Liberty. You don't have to book those four months in advance, but you will wanna book those a day or two in advance. The number one thing that I recommend to everybody visiting New York City for the very first time is take a tour. My personal recommendation is to take a tour on the very first day that you come. I really like this because I find that it gives you a lay of the land, it helps you understand New York City, it gives you a friend in New York City. Your tour guide is going to become your friend over the course of the tour. They will introduce you to local customs and sayings so you can just blend in like a native New Yorker. But the truth is, any time during your stay, take a tour, it will really give you really wonderful insight into the city. What food should you eat in New York City? So New York City has four food groups. Our four food groups are bagels, hot dogs, cheesecake, and pizza. So in terms of where to go, my general opinion is that if you are looking for bagels, the bagel that is the closest to you is going to be the most delicious bagel because it's going to be the freshest. If you really want names of bagel places, I really like Russ and Daughters, Essa Bagel, and Zucker's Bagels. All super delicious, but the truth is almost every bagel in New York City is super yummy. In terms of hot dogs, I always like Feltman's hot dogs. Feltman's hot dogs were the original New York City hot dog. I like to go to a place called McSorley's Old Ale House to get them. You can get these Feltman hot dogs. They put chili or sauerkraut on top of them. They are super delicious. For cheesecake, I have two recommendations. There's Junior's Cheesecake. They have two locations in Times Square. Arguably the best cheesecake in all of New York City. You're gonna go into Junior's and you're gonna think it is super touristy, and it is, but it's touristy because it's delicious. And you can get the cheesecake to go and eat it in your hotel if you want. 
And then a more off the beaten path cheesecake place is Eileen's famous cheesecake. They serve these little tiny round individual cheesecakes. They come in a bunch of different flavors. They are so good. And then in terms of pizza, we have so much pizza in New York City, but you're really looking for a traditional New York City style pizza that is pizza that's made in a coal burning oven. And my favorite pizza in Manhattan is a place called John's of Bleecker Street in Greenwich Village. John's of Bleecker Street. It is so delicious and super yummy. Now, if you really want to delve more into the world of pizza, I recommend that you check out Scott's Pizza Tours. He has a pizza tour company. These pizza tours are amazing. As a tour guide myself, I strongly recommend Scott's Pizza Tours. What are some useful apps that you should download before you visit New York City? Well, for me, the app that I probably use the most is simply Google Maps. I find that Google Maps is really easy for navigating the city. It will even tell me which subway lines to take to get to my destination. A lot of people really like to use a subway app. My personal favorite subway app is called Underway. A lot of people really like Transit. There's a bunch of different subway apps, but it's really good to just have a subway map on your phone. So any app that has the full subway map is going to be really, really useful. Now, Bathrooms can be a little hard to find in New York City. So there's an app called Sit or Squat that will help you find public restrooms to use. And then if you are a theater lover, you definitely, definitely, definitely want to download an app called Today Ticks. Today Ticks will help you get tickets to Broadway shows, sometimes discounted tickets to Broadway shows, and a lot of Broadway shows run their lotteries. These are lotteries for heavily discounted tickets. They'll run those lotteries on Today Ticks, making Today Ticks just a, a must-have app. If you are a cyclist, the City Bike app will be really, really useful to you as well. And then you might want to download a car service app such as Uber or Lyft because that will help you get around if for some reason you're unable to navigate the subway or the subway isn't running late at night. Oh, and a lot of museums have their own apps. So if you plan on visiting a specific museum, check and see if they have an app to download before you come. My personal favorite museum app is the 9-11 Museum app. They have an audio tour. It's magnificent. They also have a special audio tour for kids to help them understand the events of 9-11. So I just recommend to any guest visiting that museum, you really want to download their official app. Should you tip in New York City? And the answer to this is yes. New York City does have a tipping culture and no one's ever going to be upset if you offer them a tip. If they're not allowed to accept it, they will just politely let you know, but it will never be seen as an insult. And some professions such as the wait staff at most restaurants, the salary is completely dependent on people tipping. So for many people, whether or not you, the customer, tip can be the difference of whether or not they can pay their rent at the end of the day. Now, when in doubt for how much to tip, my recommendation is to say 20%. No one's going to ever be insulted by a 20% tip. Now, who you should tip, definitely wait staff, any sort of car service, the driver for any of these car services, um, tour guides, concierges, if you get your nails done, if you get your hair done, that's all going to be something that you want to tip for. Um, something that I heard was in terms of staying at a hotel, the room service amount should be $2 per night. I recommend that you tip your hotel concierges, especially if they get you a reservation at a restaurant or a show that's typically really, really hard to get. They, of course, dedicate their lives to knowing the city so that you can have your very best experience. 
I also know that at the moment, some people believe that tipping has gotten a bit out of hand in New York City. It feels like every time you go to purchase anything, you get asked, do you want to tip a certain amount? My recommendation is to always tip. At the end of the day, if you tip even a dollar, you are going to make that person's day. And it's much better to be remembered as the person who made someone smile than the person who didn't leave a tip. So in my opinion, always say yes to tipping when you're given that option. Also, a lot of times if you can, it's better to tip in cash rather than by card because sometimes the card takes a certain percentage out. So I've heard that a lot of people really prefer to be tipped in cash if you can manage that. And speaking of that, when you come to New York City, do you need to bring cash? Do you need to bring a card? I've actually had guests who were very surprised to find out that there were so many places that accepted cash in New York City because they heard that New York City only accepted card. It's actually illegal for any place in New York City to only accept card. So you can bring a card or you can bring cash or you can bring both. There will be some places that only take cash, especially if you go into neighborhoods in Manhattan, such as Chinatown, a lot of places will only accept cash. So I recommend that you always have some cash on hand, but you will be good with either cash or card. Also, a lot of places use tap to pay or Apple Pay, which has made my life so much easier. The subway uses Apple Pay and tap to pay as well. So you don't even need a Metro card at the moment, but I would recommend you bring both. Which brings us on to the topic of how much money should you bring to New York City? Now, this is a really difficult question to answer because I think that there is a New York City for literally every budget. If you want to eat at our three Michelin star restaurants and pay $350 per person per meal, you can do that. But you can also get five dumplings for a dollar or get a slice of pizza that costs a dollar and 25 cents and you're going to feel full and you can do that for three meals a day and spend under five dollars eating every single day. So you can really kind of choose your own experience here. But here's just kind of a basic outline of what you can expect to spend on different things in New York City. I find that typically if you budget about $14 per person for every meal, that's a fair amount for any sort of sit down restaurant or takeaway restaurant. If you're looking to get cocktails, cocktails usually range between $14 and $17. And all of this is of course before any sort of a tip. So depending on what sort of experience you want to have, that amount can go way up. If you want to get, you know, front row seats to all the hottest Broadway shows and eat at our fanciest restaurants, you're going to need a lot more money than that. But if you want to travel on a budget, you can see great free entertainment outdoors in the summer. You can eat on a budget at a lot of our restaurants and have a really great time. And honestly, you can walk most places in Manhattan if you are a, a good walker. So that amount is going to be very personal for you. What scam should you look out for in New York City? So I have an entire video about scams that you can watch. We go in depth about the scams in New York City, but the main ones that you want to look out for, there are, I call them the CD guys. These are people who, they will hand you a CD. They'll ask you your name. They will autograph this CD. They make you think that they are an up and coming musician and they make you think that this CD is going to be free. And then you take that CD and then they tell you it's going to be $40. And if you don't pay that $40, they will chase you down the street. These CD guys, they are the bane of my existence as a tour guide. I warn everybody about them. You just don't want to take a CD from anybody handing them out on the streets. And for that matter, there are also what we call 
faux monks. They are fake monks. They are not real monks. And they walk around and they try to hand you either a bracelet or a token, and they hope that you will take it. And then if you take it, they will ask you for money. If you ask them about what temple they belong to, they can't answer because they're not a real monk, but they will have just gotten your money. Basically, if somebody tries to hand you something in the street, just say no. Which tourist attractions are worth it? I personally think that tourist attractions are tourist attractions because they're awesome and they're fun. There's a reason why tourists go. So I'm of the belief that if you go to New York City and you do not visit Times Square, you are doing it wrong. Other things that you can do, attractions that I believe are totally worth it, you have to visit an observation deck. We currently have a bunch of observation decks. We have Empire State Building, Top of the Rock, One World Observatory, Edge, and Summit One Vanderbilt. Choose one, go get bird's eye views. They are amazing. I think you have to see the Statue of Liberty. You don't necessarily have to go to Liberty Island, but at least go to Battery Park and see it from afar, or take one of the cruises, or ride the Staten Island Ferry to get to see the Statue of Liberty. I think it's a really magical experience. I think you have to take a walk through Central Park. That's totally worth it. The World Trade Center site, I believe they've done a beautiful job rebuilding it and showing us how New York City has risen like a phoenix from the ashes. You don't necessarily have to go into the museum. That's a really intense experience, but at least visit the pools and maybe even take a tour to help you understand that site better. I also think that Broadway shows, totally worth it. They're a must see when you visit New York City. Should you buy the passes? So New York City has a couple of different passes. There's New York Pass, there's City Pass, and the philosophy behind these passes is you pay a certain amount of money for these passes, and then you can get into all of these different attractions and you potentially save money. My personal recommendation is that these passes aren't worth it. You're going to be much better off just literally booking direct. And there's a couple of different reasons for this. First of all, it is actually kind of challenging to mix and match all of the things on the passes so that you actually do save money. And a couple of things on those passes, a couple of the attractions have pay what you wish days. So if you plan ahead, you can technically go to those for free anyway. Now, I also have found that when I look at those passes and their offerings, a lot of the attractions will be like every observation deck in New York City. And I love observation decks, but there's a lot to do in New York City. So if you wanna get like a really well-rounded experience and not just spend every day at an observation deck, I think you're gonna be better off just booking things alone. Now also, as somebody who has worked at these tourist attractions, I can also tell you that these passes often have to be exchanged for tickets. That means you're going to be waiting in line to exchange the passes for tickets. These lines can be very long. What this also means is that if it's an attraction such as a cruise that has a finite amount of people that can fit into that attraction, they are going to prioritize the people who book direct, and if you are booking with one of the passes, you can be bumped and have to wait for either the next round of the cruise or you might not get on at all. So I just am a huge fan of booking direct if you can. Also, it can be really hard to fit all of the attractions from these passes into one day. For example, if one of those Attractions is the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty can easily take four hours. By the time that you've seen Statue of Liberty, you're probably gonna be tired, you're probably gonna to wanna to get some food. And then if you wanna to go to one of the museums, the museums might close at four or five o'clock and you just don't have enough time to do everything. So again, I feel like you're better off booking direct. That's ultimately gonna save you the most money in the end. Should you plan any day trips during your first stay in New York City? The places that I'm asked the most about for these day trips are Washington DC and Niagara Falls. For both of these, I would say that it is not a day trip. 
to get to Washington, D.C., that's going to take you at least three hours there and three hours back. That means that six hours of your day is going to be spent traveling. And in my opinion, Washington, D.C. is just too awesome to give it that short of a time. And then Niagara Falls is over six hours both ways. So that means you're going to spend about 13 hours traveling in the best of conditions. And the falls are amazing, but that is a lot of travel to see the waterfalls. And there's so much to do in New York City that I wouldn't make that a day trip. Now, what a lot of people do that I think is a good idea is to spend, you know, for example, three days in Washington, D.C., then three days in New York City, and then three days up in Niagara Falls. And that way they have a nice little over-the-road trip and they can give each city the proper amount of time. Now, that being said, there are some cool places to take day trips. For example, Asbury Park in New Jersey and Terrytown in New York. And I'm actually going to call out a fellow New York City creator, Amore Travels, because she has the best content for day trips. Seriously, follow her on Instagram if you're interested in a day trip why you should book direct on your first trip to New York City. So what booking direct means? This means that if you're staying in a hotel, if you're flying on an airplane, if you're booking a tour, if you're booking an attraction, that you're actually booking it directly from that company, directly from that company's website, as opposed to a third party seller. So if you're booked directly from the website, this is going to allow you to make changes more easily. If you need to get a refund, it's going to help you get that refund a little bit more easily. And it also allows you to talk directly to the company that you are booking with. So if you have any questions, you will be put in direct contact with that company. And I just find that it's going to make your trip so much easier and everything run so much smoother if you book direct. Final thing to know for your first trip to New York City is that New Yorkers are actually really friendly. We might have a hard candy shell, but inside we are warm and fuzzy and nice and fun loving. So feel free to talk to us, to get to know us, to ask us questions if you're lost. Just, just know that if we're on the subway, we're usually very zoned. <laughs> but in general, if you go into any of the shops or restaurants, ask us questions. Ask what our favorite things to do are in New York City. You're going to get some really great insider tips. So New Yorkers are friendly and I think you're going to have a wonderful time if you visit New York City. I hope that this video has helped you plan your trip to New York City. If you like this video, I have nearly a thousand videos about New York City. Videos that are hotel reviews and restaurant reviews, attraction reviews, and just fun history facts. So make sure that you click subscribe. It really helps me bring you more videos like this. So thank you so much for joining and for more NYC, follow me.